This is the first of two presentations in which I'm going to examine a number of properties of the sine and the cos which are used commonly in advanced mathematics and knowledge of which is often taken for granted. You might have forgotten how to prove these relations or perhaps you might never have seen the proof. I'm going to start with a fairly simple one which says that the cosine of an angle is the same as cos of the negative of that angle. Let's write that down. There it is. I've called the angle theta. Cos of theta equals cos of negative theta. I'm going to demonstrate this in two different ways. First of all, graphically, by using the graph of the cosine function. Let's draw that now. y equals cos x. Here's a plot of the graph. I've added some marks on to show some of the important points. X is measured in radians, as is normal for advanced trigonometry. Recall that the graph oscillates between troughs at the depth negative 1 and peaks at the height 1. It repeats itself every 2 pi unit along the x-axis, so it's periodic. Notice that the graph is symmetric about the y-axis. It's as if a mirror has been held along the y-axis and the graph is reflected from one side to the other. That property is intimately connected with the formula that we're about to prove. So, let's now pick a value of the angle and call it theta. I'll take it to the right-hand side of the y-axis first. I'm going to mark in a theta and then trace up to the graph at the height cos theta. Here we go. We can see that for the theta I've chosen, cos theta comes in at just a little bit below 0.5. That's the height. Now, what about negative theta? Well, for negative theta, we just have to go an equal distance to the other side of the vertical axis. Let me mark in negative theta now, and also put in the dotted lines showing its cos. There. My artistic skills are not perfect, but I think you can get the idea that the heights are the same for theta and negative theta. Cos theta appears to equal cos of negative theta. Of course, this doesn't really constitute a proof. It's just some pictures that we've drawn, and it looks like it might be the case. So I now want to go ahead and prove this relation a little more rigorously, using the definition of cos. I hope you remember about that definition. It's done using the unit circle, a circle with radius 1 and x and y coordinates on the unit circle. Let's give ourselves a new page and remind ourselves how that works. Here's a unit circle. That is, a circle of radius 1. I've picked a point on it and drawn a radius at an angle theta to meet the circle at that point. I've given the point the coordinates x and y. I've also marked those values now on the x and y axes. Now, what are we trying to prove? Cos theta equals cos minus theta. Well, what is the cos of theta? Our definition of cos theta is that it's the x-coordinate of that point on the circle. In the same way, sine theta is the y-coordinate of that point on the circle. It's important that the circle is a unit circle for this definition. Let's write down those two definitions. I've used a point in the first quadrant but those definitions are equally valid all the way around the circle in all four quadrants. So now let's look at negative theta. Negative theta would be an angle of the same magnitude as theta but measured in the opposite direction, that is, measured clockwise around the circle. Let's put that in. Now, my drawing might not be perfect, but we do know that a circle is perfectly symmetric about both the axes. So even if I haven't drawn it perfectly, we know that by choosing that angle negative theta, we must go the same distance to the right, that is, x. On the other hand, we'll be going down the same distance that we went up for positive theta. So the new coordinate actually is x negative y. Let's mark that all in. If the new coordinate is x negative y, that means we can now write down that cos of theta is x and at the same time we get the bonus that sine of sorry I meant cos of negative theta is x 
and we get the bonus result that also sine of negative theta is negative y. I'll write those down now. So in fact we've now proved the result we were going to we claimed we were going to prove. Cos of negative theta is x and cos of theta is also x. It follows from the definition of what we mean by cos theta. At the same time we've got this extra result which is a bonus. Sine of theta is y while sine of negative theta is negative y. We can now write down those two relations, not just the cos one, but also the extra one that we've just noticed. Cos theta is equal to cos of negative theta. And we've now also noticed that sine of negative theta is, well, look, there's that extra minus sign there, so minus sine of theta. two results for the price of one. However, using the unit circle like this is foolproof. It doesn't rely on marking points on a graph very accurately. We know the circle is symmetric, so even if I haven't drawn it very well, the x-coordinates must be the same and the heights y and negative y must be equal in, in magnitude. Let's just finish off by looking at that second relation, sine theta equals sine of minus sine of negative theta. Let's see what the graph has to say about that and see if it looks sensible on the graph. I'll need a new page for this. So, here's the graph of y equals sine x, periodic like cos, varying between negative 1 and 1 like cos. But unlike cos, it goes through the origin. It's actually the same shape as cos, but shifted over by an amount pi by 2. Let's choose some value theta. I'll put my theta here. Let's measure up to the graph, and we see that we get a height. I haven't done that very well. Let's be a bit more careful. Here we go. A height given by sine theta that height there. If we move over to the left by the same distance, that's around about here, negative theta, this time the graph is underneath. And if I've done it very carefully, we should see that this distance here and this distance here should look equal, and in fact this is the distance minus sine theta. So the sine of negative theta, which we just claimed on the previous page was minus sine theta, well it does look like the graph supports that information as well. I'm going to conclude here. In part two we'll look at some relations in which the angle gets shifted by an amount of 90 degrees one way or the other.